in what uh, follows, I will be presenting a guided meditation on recollection of death. And by way of introduction, I want to briefly describe uh, what we will be doing so that you are prepared and also say a few words on the significance of this type of practice. So the practice I'll be introducing is particularly suitable for the lying down posture, the corpse posture. And we will begin by with a short reflection and all the things that on dying we need to leave behind. Then use the four elements, earth, water, fire and wind. Earth is standing for the quality of solidity and hardness. Water for liquidity, cohesion. Fire for warm, different degrees of temperature, and wind for motion. Using these four elements to relate to different stages in the actual process of dying. And these four elements also relate to the falling apart of the body after death. And we'll be going through this in some detail. And then eventually come to two aspects of the practice that relate to other bodily postures. One is using the breath, which is particularly suitable for sitting meditation. And the other is the felt sense of the skeleton inside of our own body, which is particularly apt for relating recollection of death to the standing and the walking posture. And the skeleton can also be used as a visual image. I have a skeleton always with me. It's usually where I meditate as a constant reminder of mortality. Even though I will be presenting this practice in much detail, afterwards when we do this for ourselves, it is important that we adjust according to our personal needs and requirements. At times there may be things happening in our personal life that render the initial reflections on all the things and beloved ones we have to leave behind, something that we might prefer to skip. Also the stages of decomposition of the body can be rather strong and there may be times when it is better not to use these. We have mindfulness to alert us to what is appropriate and we adjust our practice accordingly, not pushing too hard, not forcing ourselves, but at the same time keeping up with this practice. Recollection of death is something to be done every day. It is so incredibly important for us to work with this particular practice. We are all going to die. There's no question about that. And it is perhaps natural, but actually not such a good idea if we don't prepare for that. 
we don't start studying only on the day of the examination. We don't start exercising our muscles only on the day of competition. Similarly, it is not a good idea to prepare for death only at the time when we are actually dying. Who knows what situation we may be in. We may be sick. There may be unresolved problems. Others who are dying, crying. A very stressful situation. It is better now to take time regularly to train ourselves in the art of dying, to get ready for what we anyway have to face. There's a whole branch of cognitive psychology that studies the ways we human beings tend to ignore our own mortality. It is called terror management theory. The theory of how we manage our existential terror. Like all animals, we have the survival instinct. But we differ from them with the knowledge that we will ultimately not be successful. This tension between these two creates terror, existential terror. And terror management theory has been able to show a whole range of defense mechanisms employed to ignore the fact of our mortality. And basically, there are two main thrusts. One is to somehow pretend that death doesn't really affect me. And the other one is to push it off into the future. Simply said, it's not me, and anyway, not now. So the two practices that I suggest to take into sitting and standing and walking meditation, based on the first part that we'll be doing, are meant to address precisely these two to drive home the fact that death is about me dying. And particularly the practice of the breath to make it clear that we cannot be sure when death will take place and it could even happen right now. We can't be completely sure. And besides preparing ourselves for the actual time of dying, this practice also prepares us for the time of living. When we become aware of our mortality, it puts our whole life into perspective. What is really important? What are the things that I want to do before I have to leave? Our priorities get clarified. We easily forgive and ask for forgiveness. We become more alive through recollection of death. And recollection of death is facing ignorance head on. There is nothing human beings like to ignore as much as the fact of their own mortality. Ignorance is the main problem from a Buddhist perspective. 
And so it is no surprise that recollection of death can lead to the deathless, to awakening. And in Buddhist thought, the deathless is not something to be realized after one has passed away. The deathless is realized while still alive, here and now. So it is a very powerful practice of insight meditation, vipassana. And it is a very powerful way of bringing an inner tranquility and calmness into our life. If we learn to face death, it gives so much inner peace. And we are able to face our own death and that of others with composure and understanding. There's a little poetic saying that I owe to my friend John kabat I've slightly adjusted it, but it nicely fits the main thrust of this practice. Those who die before they die, no longer die when they die. I think I've said enough now by way of introduction and I would invite you to find a place so that you can lie down in the corpse posture use any yoga mat or mattress, whatever it is. And if you are meditating together with others, just make sure that you don't have any bodily contact with others and that the bodily posture is as relaxed and comfortable as possible, lying on the back. And there's a little tool that I like to recommend for any meditation done in the prone posture, in the lying down posture. And this is to keep the lower half of one arm raised up horizontally. So the upper half of the arm still rests on the ground, on the elbow. And on the elbow, the lower half is raised up. It doesn't take any effort as the weight naturally rests on the elbow. But what happens is that if we get even a little bit sleepy or tired, the arm will drop to one direction or the other, or it will start to collapse. So keeping the arm up in a very relaxed manner is a very helpful way for us to notice when the mind just starts to slightly lose off, we lose clarity, because that is the main challenge in the lying down posture, to keep the alertness of the mind, simply because we are so used to use that posture for sleeping. So if you have found a posture for you, a place, to lie down in the corpse posture. And maybe keep that lower half of one arm raised up in a relaxed manner, just to make sure we don't fall into the ignorance of sleepiness but that we are alert and awake. And we start by becoming aware of the whole body as it is lying on the ground. And if you wish, 
as part of that whole body awareness, also aware of the natural process of breathing, not as something that we focus on, to the exclusion of everything else, but just as part of this whole body awareness. And we relax the body, letting it as if we were sinking into the ground. And at times, in order to encourage this relaxation, we may just briefly tense it up, like for a moment, tense up the legs and relaxing them. Tense up the arms and relaxing them. Tense up the shoulders and relaxing them. And finally tense up the facial muscles and relaxing it. And with the continuity of whole body awareness, awareness of the whole body in this very relaxed condition and in the corpse posture, we start our practice. Now the time has come for us to die. And as the time has come for us to die, all those roles, responsibilities we had, we have to leave them behind. When we were born, we were given a name. And in the course of time, this name was associated with various things we did. We may even have changed the name, getting married, becoming monastics. We may have acquired educational degrees or responsibilities, allowing us to add titles to this name. All of this all of the functions or contributions to society, everything that goes with this name of ours, we cannot take it along. We have to leave it behind. Others may continue. Some of what we did, they may not continue. But whatever they do, they will do it without us. And we let go of all those aspects of our sense of identity, of who we are, what we did. We let go. Nameless we came. Nameless we go. And our possessions, all those things that we own, perhaps we own a car, have built ourselves a house, own vast territories, or we may be just monastics, owning a few books, robes, and a bowl. Even the clothes we wear, the robes we wear, we cannot take them along. All of it 
we have to leave behind. It will be used by others or it will be discarded. And we let go. We let go of all our possessions. Naked we came, naked we go. And all our relatives, friends, the family into which we were born, and from there, that whole circle of close and dear ones, these two, we have to leave behind. We cannot take them along. They will continue without us. And we let go of all our close and dear ones. Alone we came, alone we go. Letting go. And having let go of our identity, possessions and relations, now time has come to slowly let go of this body. And as the process of dying sets in, we gradually lose control of our limbs. We are no longer able to move our limbs the way we were before. And the body feels so heavy. The earth element. We are losing control over the earth element. And the body feels heavy as if oppressed by a weight. And if we are lying down and having a blanket of us, we would wish that somebody would remove even that blanket because it feels so heavy, like lead. And if there are others who are around us and taking care of us, and they might have to move our body around, they will also experience it as if it had become more heavy. The weight of the body has not changed, of course, but the body is losing its structure. And this makes it much more difficult for others to move our body around. We are losing control over the earth element. And next we lose control over the water element. Water may come out of our eyes and out of our genitals. And we feel so thirsty, parched up. We want to drink. And we are no longer able to communicate, but we may open our mouth and pull out the tongue as if saying, I want to drink, I'm so thirsty. Losing control over the water element. and losing control over the fire element. Slowly, the feet and the hands start to lose their temperature and coldness starts to move 
from the extremities of the limbs gradually and slowly towards the torso, towards the heart. And we feel so cold. The body might start to shiver. Feet and hand become slightly bluish. And if earlier we would have liked the blankets to be removed, now we would like them to be put on and even more. As we are losing control over the fire element, So cold, the coldness is creeping up closer and closer, closer and closer to the heart. And breathing becomes so difficult, belabored breathing, short inhalations, long exhalations gasping for breath, the whole body making last efforts to take in another inhalation, another bit of oxygen. Until it no longer breathes. And with that last exhalation, we let go of the body. We no longer feel it. It is just there. Our connection with the body has been severed and we no longer feel, sense what will happen to it. And what happens is that with the ending of breath are the manifestations of the wind element in the body gradually cease. The wind element falls apart and the body becomes completely cold. Fire element falls apart and it starts to lose all its liquids. Water element falls apart. And gradually, the process of the falling apart of the earth element sets in. The eyes bulge out. The stomach starts to digest itself. The process of decomposition sets in with a sweetish but sickening smell. And that smell attracts animals. If we are in a hot climate, quickly the whole body will be covered by insects. Maggots fill the nose and the mouth, start eating up the fleshy parts, eating the tongue and eating their way into the brain. Larger animals get attracted, vultures, crows, jackals, and they start eating this body biting off 
the ears, the genitals, tearing out the intestines, the heart, the lungs, munching away at the muscles and fat. And if the body is being buried, worms will feast on it. And eventually, only the skeleton remains. For some time it is still held together by the dried up sinews. But as these decompose, the skeleton falls apart, bones here and there, slowly crumbling to dust. The earth element has also decomposed, come to an end. And as we lie here in the corpse posture, away of the body, away of the breathing, we become aware of the skeleton inside of our own body, that felt sense of the skeleton as a way of bringing home to ourselves the fact that this body is of the same fate. It will fall apart. We may die in an accident and not experience the four element stages of dying. We may be burned in that accident so the body will not gradually decompose, but it is going to fall apart. I am certainly going to die, no doubt about it. This is a fact. And we don't know when this will happen. It will happen for sure. And it could even happen right now. And we become aware of the process of our breathing. Natural, relaxed breathing. Not in changing or influencing the breathing in any way, just a way of it and with every inhalation knowing that I cannot be completely sure this could be my last breath. And with every exhalation we relax and let go, relax and let go. With every inhalation, this could be my last breath. And with every exhalation, we let go. And even if this is not the last breath, it is certainly one breath closer to death. With every breath, we are coming closer to death. And with every breath, 
we are getting ready for death. We are training in the art of dying. We are facing our own shadow. We are no longer running away from the truth of our mortality. And training in the art of dying is training in the art of living by facing death we become fully alive fully alive to the precious present moment we become whole by allowing death to become part of our life this is the process of healing, of becoming whole. And it is a practice that leads to genuine joy, to inner peace and calmness. And to the realization of the deathless. May all of you progress on the path to the deathless in the supreme peace, in the supreme happiness, in the supreme liberation the realization of Nibbana, the deathless. And as we keep gradually coming out of our meditation, coming out of the corpse posture, we maintain awareness of the skeleton inside of our own body. Whole body awareness with particular attention to the skeleton as something that we can use for the continuity of practice with any activities. Perhaps we may feel now it is time to go a little bit outside and walk, be at the fresh air, or we may decide to sit, in which case we can work with the breath. Awareness of our own mortality conjoined to the breath. Sitting, lying, walking, standing, we continue step by step, gradually, but with consistency and dedication, to walk the path to the deathless. <laughs> 